morning. Yarnivores, it is December 18th. And I'm on my way to drop off a whole bunch of packages. This is the bulk of it. Um, my wife just told me as we were leaving the house that she feels like this sweater is something that Dan Lovey would wear. And honestly, I don't think anyone's ever given me a higher compliment on my netwear. And if you're wondering, this is the Vinterskov by Perry Westerman. I made it, uh, whatever year she released it, two years, three years ago? But, um, Carrie made hers in a very classy, timeless, beautiful yellow, and I made mine in neon green because it's me. <laughs> to literally no one's surprise, right? Anyway, I'm about to jump into the shops to get some stuff for next week, and hopefully for some baking, which I am hoping to do today. I was gonna have this be like a really ASMR vlog with just like the sounds of baking, but I forgot that that school there plays loud music every Friday. <laughs> it's my own fault for forgetting. A few minutes ago it was Who Let the Dogs Out, which I feel maybe isn't the Christmas vibe that we're all reaching for. I waited until the song was over and moved away from the window just in case they decided to replay it, but they just played. <laughs> Last Christmas by Wham, so I will see you all in Wham Holla. Thank you. 
again lovelies um, I have finished baking for the day um, so spritz cookies you'll notice um, well I don't know if you'll have noticed but <laughs> there's not actually any leaveners so there's no like baking powder baking soda or yeast um, in spritz cookies I will put the link into the description for the recipe that I use um, the recipe says that you don't have to refrigerate you can probably get away with not refrigerating, but um, if you do, then you'll probably want to pop the bowl or whatever you're using into the fridge in between putting them out because, I mean, it is like a butter-based cookie, so if it's warm at all in your kitchen, which it probably will be with the oven on, it's going to start getting a little bit, like the dough is going to be a little bit soft, it's not going to want to stick to the parchment paper, it turns into kind of pain, <laughs> talking from experience. Um, so that's what I would say about that. Um, I haven't made them for a few years. Uh, the set that you saw me using today, I think I actually bought that last year and I didn't end up having time to use it at all. So this was my first time actually using that cookie press. If I had a piece of advice for people who want to use a cookie press, it would be um, spend a little bit more initially. Don't get like the 10 pound ones or the $15 ones on eBay because they're not super great. <laughs> Again, speaking from experience, it is fiddly. You're going to spend a lot of time like scraping dough off the front of it to put it back in the bowl to have another go. Um, so, I mean, that's just, I don't know. I've never found that to not be the case with with spritz cookies and like using a, a cookie press. Like it's going to be a pain. <laughs> it is going to be a pain, unfortunately. Um, also with the recipe that I used, I added a little bit more flour because I read through the comments on that recipe page and there's a lot of people who said that either the dough was too soft and wouldn't stick to the parchment paper or they were spreading a little bit too much and mine still spread a little bit you can see um in the pictures and um in the close-ups and stuff they still spread a little bit so um I put probably an extra four tablespoons um you know just kind of eyeballing it until the dough looked a little bit less soft so if you are going to use that recipe, then I would say um, maybe add just a touch more flour. Um, obviously, you don't want to add too much because then you'll have gross tasting cookies and nobody wants that. Um, so I'm pretty happy with how they turned out today. There have been times where me trying to make spritz cookies has ended in tears when I can't get a cookie press to work, which is what happened with my old cookie press that I had, I don't know, like five years ago or something. Um, and it was just because it was kind of a, a crappy build for the cookie press like I like the kind that you have like a full-on handle to clench whereas that only had like a depression lever there was no squeezing just like you push down and it just it wasn't I don't know personally I like the ones with a whole handly thing um and obviously if you wanted you could decorate them with royal icing if you want I I don't know, if I'm feeling real extra, I'll do royal icing or I'll do sugar cookies with royal icing, but it's usually only if I'm doing it like with friends as like an activity. Doing it by myself just kind of feels kind of sad. <laughs> um, and cookie decorating, while I can sometimes rope my wife in, it's not really her jam, so, um, so I tend to end up doing most of it myself, even if, um, even if she helps out a little bit, and so I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that whole charade this year because I'm gonna feel sad that I'm doing it by myself. So, um, but yeah, you could use royal icing on them if you want. You can always swap out the almond extract and use more, um, use more vanilla if you want, or just or whatever. Um, did you know? I'm sure all of you probably know this. There's people who sell like artistic sprinkle mixes or like custom sprinkles um, or not necessarily custom, but you know what I mean? Like bougie sprinkle mixes with really cool stuff on Etsy. And I meant to get some this year and I just, I left it way too late. I just didn't think about it until today when I was pulling all of my sprinkles out <laughs> thinking, Oh, I should have gotten some cool like artisan sprinkles this year, but I just left it way too late. Um, so I bought some at Asda <laughs> this morning, and I don't know if you can tell in the pictures, but so there was like the little holly and like the holly berries sprinkles, and like the holly leaves were fine, 
But for some reason, the little red berries turned brown in the oven. I mean, I know why it's, it caramelized, but I don't know why they did that. <laughs> Whereas the other red circular ones that I had in a different pack of sprinkles did not. So interesting. I'm sure somebody in the comments will probably have an answer. Um, anyway, so um, that's probably going to be mostly it. Oh, I just wanted to show you more of my Venture Scob sweater. I'll pop a link for that down below as well. This is probably my favorite garment I've ever made, which is kind of a shame as it's like aggressively festive. <laughs> um, obviously you can choose to not make yours in neon green and have it slightly less festive. Um, it's because I really like trees. I'm a big fan of trees. And also this was a different fit than any sweater I had made for myself before. This one is like a bit of a roomier fit, more positive ease. And I've always been like, I had previously always been like, afraid to wear positive ease. I don't know, maybe I'll do another vlogmas about that. Um, but I think I made this two or three years ago whenever she released the pattern. Don't know when that was. Um, I've had it for at least two years, I think. <laughs> anyway, but I wanted to show you um, that I have a little TARDIS on mine and that was um, a chart that somebody put up on Ravelry pre, obviously pre new rav because i don't really go on there at all much anymore um anyway and uh it was i think her name was um darcy wonker on ravelry had the little tardis chart edition um for this which i super love and absolutely ripped off her idea <laughs> i mean i asked her first i didn't just you know do it uh anyway i really super love this sweater i love the colors i love how the fit is and i kind of just like want to make more of them but maybe less festive but then I don't know I'm not usually somebody who makes the same thing twice you know I've got to like move on or I get a bit bored but anyway so this is probably my favorite thing I've ever made for myself um and it's a shame that this is the first time that I've worn it this year usually I wear it to like every festive outing that I have in December which last year was I don't know, like a fair few, you know, go to a few parties, go to a few outings. I would just wear this every time, like as a coat, because it is very warm. Um, but obviously I've not gone anywhere this year. So it was only this morning when I was getting ready to go outside to take packages out that I was like, oh my God, I should wear my sweater. I haven't worn it yet. So I'm just going to wear it uh, around the house. If I... <laughs> I'll have to like keep all the windows and doors open otherwise I'll get too warm um but yeah I love love this sweater it's probably my favorite I've said that like 14 times now so uh with that I'm going to leave you all and tomorrow is what day is tomorrow <laughs> tomorrow Saturday we will be doing a live stream tomorrow night we'll be playing more of the same Cthulhu plays Christmas so do come and join us and I think tomorrow hmm, I don't want to promise anything I'm hoping to try and crank out another hat with the Aaron weight to see how different the gauge looks because I am quite excited about that and that yarn, the yarn that I showed off yesterday, um, it's ready. Um, anyway, so the yarn is ready to go. I haven't decided which, which one I will use first. I mean, let's be real. We all know I'm going to pick this one to, <laughs> to use first. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna look up some more you know tutorials and a few people invi invited me to some very helpful Facebook groups with some tips and tricks and patterns and such for for these circular knitting machines. So I'm gonna have a good look at that and just kind of get my head around it. And maybe I'll try that tomorrow if I get a chance. Anyway, we'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs>